So one thing before we get started, uh, unfortunately David Ramsey wasn't able to join us this weekend. David has been really, really struggling with uh, something in his back. We don't know if it's a if it's a pinched nerve or a slipped disc, but he's one of the toughest guys that I know and he's been struggling for a couple of weeks. So uh, on, on his behalf, he, he wishes that he could be here and um, if you have a chance, if you have those social media accounts, you know, Twitters and things of that nature, send him your well wishes and he will really appreciate it. David Ramsey, I love you. <laughs> set, oh. set, done. Okay, we're going to say something real quick and then we're going to go ahead and I guess open up the questioning. How you guys been? We're loving Arrow. You guys are incredible. The show is awesome. You make the show. We love you so much. What can you tell us that we don't or we haven't known yet. I'm not on it anymore. I'll be back. <laughs> now you understand what I was talking about, okay? <laughs> Steven, what's going Tell you something you don't know? Um, oh, I, I really, I enjoyed, so we obviously we played the trailer yesterday at my panel and... Uh, uh, Do we have it, by the way? What's that? Do we have it? We do have the trailer, sure, of sure. course. We can, show it at any, we can show it at any time. We'll show it at any time. We'll show it at the end of the panel for sure, but this was the first time that uh, I felt like a trailer for Arrow was really uh, dissected and they did that whole frame by frame, this is what it means, these are our theories, and I, I want to say that they were 85 to 90 percent wrong. <laughs> these are people that are paid to do this. So, um, I mean, it, it seems like there was a lot of stuff shown in that trailer, but so much stuff was left out. So much great stuff. But, I think, left out for a good reason. Less yeah. is more. You Less know? is more, sure. When the fourth season comes out, they'll get to see all the good stuff, too. What, 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 what? what? Spoiler alert, spoiler alert? Not yet, huh? Okay. No, no spoiler alert. It's one of those, it's the thing that I, I saw the trailer for the first time yesterday also, and I love the fact that you're, it takes you along this level like this, and then it goes, then it goes, pew! and you're off. And that's the, if you loved season three, you're gonna be so in love with season four because it's a big roller coaster again. And it's, because the thing that I like is that the writers and everybody that, that you know, they seem to know how to shock you. And that's great. Well, Matt, how are you feeling about uh, being a part of family? Oh, look, I, I, I was just, um, overwhelmed last year when I got a, a call to, to join so um, you know I honestly that role is the most fun I've ever had uh, as an actor so I felt very uh, I felt a fair bit of pressure coming in um, with such a big character as Raz al Ghul and then um, but I was welcomed so kindly by everyone so um, you know, maybe I'll come back in some flashbacks, I don't know, but regardless, the, the whole experience was wonderful, and uh, um, I had my kids over there for a couple of months, and they were on set the whole yeah. time, which was, which was awesome, so, um, yeah, one of the best experiences I've had as an actor, so I felt very uh, privileged and, and, you know, to have been a part of it, so. Well, great. we appreciate it. You really took us for a ride, and we really appreciate your association with Arrow, and we won't Thank forget you. you. It's not like you're dead. Thank you. Okay, let's start on Aaron's side. Aaron, you got a question? Yes, sir, I have. Yes, sir, I have. Our first question comes from Candice. Hi, Katie. Um, my question is, oh, by the way, I love all you guys, but um, my question for you is with... It's really funny. Funny. <laughs> by the way, screw all you guys. <laughs> Katie! I'm just kidding. Katie. <laughs> um, yeah, with the changes that you've had growing into Black Canary and with White Canary coming back and being mainly on Legends, what do you think that's going to do for Laurel and for Black Canary? Um, honestly, I, I, Katie Lotz is fantastic, and, and I, I know her personally. We're, we're good friends, and I just think it'll be that much more interesting and bring another dynamic to the show. And, 
you know, whether there will or will not be a, you know, a crossover between Legends and Arrow, and if I'm involved, at the end of the day, she is, you know, Sarah is my sister, and um, I hope to be involved. I love working with her. Oh. I think you will reunite with her <laughs> at some point. Oh. <laughs> it seems to be a con thing for me. The chairs just collapse. <laughs> Got to set up screen. <laughs> All right, Steph, I think you have someone on your side. Hey guys, my name is Alan. Uh, big fan, obviously. Um, my question, well, actually, thank you for coming, you know. Uh, sure. If you could tell the beautiful Emily that I say hi. Uh, I'm deeply sad she couldn't make it. And my question is for the gorgeous Katie Cassidy. Uh, how long did it take you to get used to fighting? Um, as a role for Canadian. Uh, how long did it take me get, to get used to it? Yeah, where, where, yeah. where By the way, uh, is he, where, what side are you? We're on the sprite side here down the aisle. It's dark, it's kind of hard oh, to see. Oh, okay, down sorry. There. I still... We can't see you, I'm so... I'm still blind. Okay. Um, well, I, I don't know if I'm still used to it. I think it's something... The thing that's great about it is... And what I appreciate about our show is that it's very... You know, it's very true and, and, and honest to the character. You know, you saw in season three, Laurel going out and fighting, but she didn't have any skill. She was just fighting, you know, from her heart. And she's slowly learning. And, and for me, it's great as an actor because I'm obviously didn't know how to fight. Yeah. There, who I mean, you, I'm sure I could have, but... Yeah, Katie, what was your, your trainer? Who was your trainer, your trainer, your training regimen, I'm sure? Yes, my trainer, is, his name is Thomas. He actually has started working with Stephen as well, Thomas Taylor, um, in Vancouver. And I was, season three, I was working out like three hours a day, five days a week, like a crazy person. Luckily, I don't have to do that, that much anymore as much because I think once you build muscle and, and, and you have muscle memory, it, it, you don't have to do it as intense, intensely. Um, but honestly, I'm still learning and I love it. And it's so much fun and I, well, it's very convincing on stage, so we really appreciate your hard work on it because it's very convincing. So oh, thank it's you. It's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right, what do, we, what, do we, what do we have, Steph? Or is it, oh, are you on Aaron now? Yep. You're on Aaron. Okay. Okay, our next question is from Steve. Hi. Uh, uh, I was uh, wanting to say that the uh, promo that you guys did for the cage match at the end of last season was one of the most amazing, <laughs> funny things that ever got done. I think for both series with Flash and was wondering what you guys' thoughts on that were. Uh, any good stories or fun about filming that and what else would you like to do? That was weird. That was a weird thing to film. You were there, right? Oh, you were there. There. Everyone was there. Everyone that's on, that was, was there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that was, uh, the credit for that goes to uh, Glenn Winter, who was the DP on our pilot and has directed several Arrow episodes, Flash episodes, and just did the pilot for Supergirl. And, and he's doing Legends. And he's doing Legends. And also to James Bamford, who is our Amen. stunt coordinator Amen. since the beginning and right now is prepping to direct his first episode of Arrow. Shut up. Wow. Is he? What? I, I kind of knew it, but I didn't, he's like is taking he it seriously. Right? Yeah. He's really fired awesome. up. So yeah. that was, that was, again, that was just a big cage. And that, that they were just running us through. And we were concurrently doing publicity shoots and... You know all the different various big nets that you will see when when the CW is promoting the show. So that was a that was a pretty crazy weekend. They put that all together. We shot that Saturday. Yeah, it was a Saturday. Yeah, all day. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> the thing, I I think there it's probably on you know uh, in the superhero fandom TV world it's probably the hottest photo shoot that you you got out there of all these people and characters and the fact that I mean. We'd always been taking pictures that were standing still when we were, you know, they take them while you're working or, you know, when you're in costume. But for them to all of a sudden go, okay, I'm going to hit the pose, do this, it allowed us a little bit more freedom to do fun stuff. Yeah. And I just think, I think they look awesome. I love the picture of myself. Well, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I do. I do. Well, excuse my ignorance, but have we seen those photo shots yet? Have they been oh, released? Yes. Yeah. Have they had? Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen them. I've seen the, 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 definitely the, the, table. the trailers. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Uh, Steph? 
Hi, uh, my name is Joe, and as a male Felicity fan, in the trailer we saw Oliver and Felicity living together, when is Oliver going to propose to Felicity? When he gets his shit together? <laughs> there's no way that I can answer that question without... There's no way that I can answer that question. <laughs> It's a good question. There's no way that I can answer that question. It sounds stressful. <laughs> but I can. <laughs> yeah, that's one hot woman. I, I got a crush on, on Felicity. That's, that's. I have a crush on Felicity. And Enjoy the She's the best. Right. <laughs> Emily's one of those people that when you're working, I mean, I get this, but I, I've, I've very rarely had stuff with Emily, and I, I enjoyed the few scenes that we had together because. For uh, you know, for her and uh, Malcolm, she's she's ballsy. She's and she yeah. she literally will say what she means, you know. And it's the what I love about her character is the fact that she's a little bit fearless. You put her in a situation and she just tell her what to do. Like in the the finale of last season when they're like, you know, hit him here, take this and hit him. She's like, oh, let's go. And then she looks like I did that. <laughs> That's one of the things, and she's a lovely girl to work with, and she is, as you say, she is hot. She is. <laughs> and as a gay man, I can say she is fiercely hot. <laughs> okay, Aaron. Yes, sir, our next question is from Mike. Hey, guys. Uh, great to see you. Thanks so much for coming down. Uh, my question is for Stephen. I think I recall on your Facebook page, maybe six months ago, someone had asked you, they ever thought they'd see a closer version of the comic book suit uh, in the show, and he said, I don't think so because, you know, we shoot in Vancouver, and it's cold, and it's raining. What was your reaction when they showed you the concept art for that? The original concept art for the suit was more or less the suit that you see now with full-length sleeves. They sent it to me. I was sitting in my trailer on 46th Avenue in Manhattan shooting... Uh, shooting turtles and I'm looking at it and we talked about what we wanted to do with the character and the new things that we wanted to imbue Oliver Queen and the arrow into green arrow with and I looked at the suit and I sent I, I I'll put the email on Facebook one day. It was like it was guys. It's just it's awesome But it's just not different enough we got to do something. We got to make the quiver bigger. We got to make more pops of green. We got to take the sleeves off. They go, we got to take the sleeves off. Done. <laughs> <laughs> they had the sketch to me in like five minutes yeah, after yeah. I sent the email. They just the waiting. So the moral of the story is, is that I screwed myself on that one. <laughs> because it has already started to get cold in Vancouver and my arms are freezing. <laughs> but if, if, if Katie Lotz can expose almost her entire chest for a season, then I can expose my arms. There you go. I'm not mad about it. Well, thank you. Uh, just no. just know you look better. really fine, son. Well, you look fine. <laughs> look old or not, Amel looks good. Always looks good. Yes, I've got, got a story. Like, when I first got the job, um, uh, they, look up, it, it came to me and, and we signed on and about a week afterwards, they came back and said that you have a shirt and scene with the Arrow. Now, I hadn't watched Arrow, I'd just seen Emil doing these ones on the, you know, on the act. <laughs> like, I'm 43, you know, I've been eating donuts and drinking beer <laughs> again. And so I had to hit the gym for like, I don't know, four weeks as hard as I could to, get, to do this shirt and scene with him and then still, my wife got on, uh, I'm, not, I'm not on any sort of real social media, but she got on there and I was getting whipped because they were like, oh, he's sloppy. <laughs> By the way, I don't think you looked but bad. Next to him. I mean, come on. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know, but Matt is a former rugby footballer. Yeah. Woo! So, he's very the training area player. You've maintained very well, my friend. You've maintained uh, very well. Hey, at 48, this shirt ain't coming off. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I three, you're good. Forty-eight? Uh-uh. No, I doubt that seriously. We're periscoping you all the time, John. You in the pool with the dog, the whole nine yards. So yeah, but notice I, I never show below the text because they, they kind of just stay there, but it's the rest that, that goes. <laughs> and, and retrospect and segue to that, we appreciate uh, Stephen and you, John, for being on social media that puts you into even closer contact with your fans by constantly showing yeah, Twitter, what? And Periscope, Facebook. You guys are everywhere and it just brings us back to your show. It's like because we can say, oh, we know this guy. Let me show you what he did yesterday, you know. We really appreciate that, so thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alrighty, somebody, yes, we have a question. This gentleman right here. Hi. This question is for John. Um, we've seen, um, oh no. We've seen you as, um, Malcolm is nearly pure evil. He's a simple love of, of his daughter. And we've seen you as, um, Harry. Rogue really turned good. As an actor, how do you play two diametrically different parts? Which is your favorite and why? Oh, I hate you for asking that question. I love it. I love that question, sir. If I wasn't up this high, I'd come down, I'd drive you right out of this place in that chair. <laughs> And I'd stand on the back for the ride on the way down, too. God damn you. Awesome. I, uh, <laughs> I, um, I, again, you know this about me, and for those of you who fall, for those of you who have been coming here for years, and I, you know, I am living, it's a hard question to answer, and I know, you know I normally don't answer favorite questions. The thing for me, as, a 48 year old man my entire almost coming up you know in a couple of years a few years 30 years in the business of doing what I have always dreamt about doing because you guys have put me in that position every character I play and to be part of something like Captain Harkness you know Captain Jack on Doctor Who <laughs> totally amazing because it, it launched me into the genre and the, the, the sci-fi world and the kind of the comic book world of what I was a fan and a geek of myself, right? So then when I have people come along and ask me if I would be part of a show called Arrow, part of the DC world, and they said the first thing out of the mouths were, you know, we don't think you'll accept it. And I'm like, are you high? <laughs> are you stupid? Of course I'll accept it. So what's great for me as that young, the boy, the man, the young kid inside of me that every day on set comes on with a smile on his face and loves the job that I do, I get to be a hero in one show and I get to be a really bad, troubled hero in another show. <laughs> so I love both of them. I cannot choose because both of them are a challenge for me and they're absolutely wonderful to play and to be part of two families is incredible. I also want to say, just to you, not that, I mean, if you don't already know this and to everybody else, you really, I feel like you were sort of coming onto our show, like the, the glue or the gel that kind of all brought us together. <laughs> I know it's a really cheesy video no, saying no, that, but... No, Arrow, Arrow didn't find its stride until it found its villain. No, it's true. I mean, it, if you talk to people about the show, <laughs> I was talking on a personal level, but that's true. Before, before I became him. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, 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 it's truly, it's a, and you know, you hear a, people talk a lot about it in their family. And of course, like families, we have our ups and downs and all the different things go on. But at the end of the day, we're all doing the same, we're for the same goal, and it's about creating the world 
for you and creating these characters for you and making sure that you have a good time. That's why Katie, Steve, and myself, and we'll get you on board on social media. That's why we're so <laughs> proud about it because we love letting you know what the hell is going on. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I said in uh, the Flash panel I did previously to the, to, the, to the cast, it's not just the superhero you know, heroics, action scenes, whatever. It's the dramatics. It's, it's, the, it's the relationships. The relationships, uh, how you appeal to each other, how you hate each other. And that was an interesting question that the young man asked because I don't think I accept the answer because... But you like you know, being evil. You thank, like you, being thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I try, all right. Isn't there so like they a drew me back into you, son of a bitch. <laughs> I, I like being a bad guy. Okay? Because as you know in my real life, I'm a big, dumb, flirty idiot, right? <laughs> and I bounce off the walls like I have been, you know, whatever. But I, I have a great time in my real life. To be, a, to be a bad guy and to kick the crap out of people and, or to make them look like I do, and just to do all that stuff and be mean and say bad things, it's awesome. <laughs> Idiot. You belong to us, so thank you very much. Uh, where are we? Steph, hi. Hi, my name is Zan, and I have a question for Steven. Yes. Um, I've never watched sports in my entire life, but I understand. <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't. I'm not gonna lie. No, I don't think um, that's. I just think Steven is such an advocate for every, like, Toronto. I love wrestling. sports. Like, I love like, sports. So, I, I know what's coming can, next out of your mouth, but I love that. So, oh, I so can Steven explain to a non-sports person what your recent wrestling experience oh, was? Awesome. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get ready to... <laughs> By the way, a couple of things uh, before I answer that question. Uh, one, you might notice that John and I are wearing the same shirt. Okay? Oh, yeah. That's because I'm wearing John's shirt. I packed a shirt this morning. There was a, like an oil stain or something on it. John brought me a shirt. I was like, what shirt do you want? I said, I'll take any shirt, it doesn't matter. He goes, I'll bring you a brown one. I go, it can't be brown. <laughs> anyway, we ended up wearing the same shirt. Um, also, John's periscope of my SummerSlam experience is a really, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful YouTube deep dive. <laughs> um, my, my recent wrestling experience is, you know, all of my stuff, as a sports fan, is, is shaped by experiences in my childhood. Uh, the thing that I loved most in my childhood was the WWE, then WWF. And uh, just like how you know, the Blue Jays are having a good season now, and they were wonderful and you know, won two championships when I was 11 and, and 12. So it's just, it's not, that, it's not that I'm a big sports fan, it's just that it's exceedingly rare <laughs> No, I am. I love sports so much. Right now, there's a college football game going on at the Georgia Dome, and as much as I love all of you, I kind of wish I was there. <laughs> um, but uh, but um, it's just that I think that it's it's a little bit more rare for someone who is has maybe the platform or the number of social media interactions that I have to be so pronounced as a fan as opposed to being more you know, political. I like every team. No, you don't. <laughs> so, uh, so being involved with the WWE and having a match and maybe being involved with them in the future, that's just, that's just me living out a childhood dream and I'm still a big kid, so it's just a, it's just a current dream as well. Cool. Well, and you were damn good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. really good. I was very impressed and too. I, I sat and watched that and I sat with my Velveeta cheese and chili dip. <laughs> 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 He was working his ass off, and I, I, I'm just saying, as, as not only someone who, uh, you know, it's known Stephen now for a, a, quite a while, and consider him a friend, and I sat there feeling like, this, I, I can't look at him because he knows I get emotional and shit like this, I felt like a proud dad, and I actually, and that's why I said on Periscope, I was like, he must be so excited and thrilled that he, for what he's doing, and he must be so nervous, and I started feeling nervous for him because, and it was, it was like a thrill of a lifetime for you. Yeah, it was, it was, 100%. And you I kicked mean, the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> it was
was the absolute most incredible thing I've seen of any actor of any series in my entire life. I'm like, he's going to do what? Yeah, but, but how great that, you know, to, to take that on, and I'm sorry this is a little blunt, but to have the balls to do something. Well, not only that, the first thing came to me was the legality of that. Your agent allowed you to, like, you're assuming that I asked permission. <laughs> It was awesome, but we loved it, and thank you for the entertainment, and thank we hope you. you go out there and kick ass later on, okay? Cool. Aaron! Our next question comes from Terrence. Hey guys, I love the show. Steven had a great time at the Knocking Point party in Philly. Cool, man. you and your mom. You're a great lady, man. I thank can you. See where, I can see like how, like, you, how well you grew up because of her and all that. Thank you. Um, this, what I wanted to ask you was, um, what can you tell us about the flashbacks to this season, and will we get to see Oliver join the Brock Club? Um, <clears throat> I can't say anything about the flashbacks this season. You will notice that in a two-minute preview that showed almost everything, we showed one teeny snippet from the flashbacks. Flashbacks are a secret. You guys will get to be able to see the, uh, the trailer for season four as soon as the panel is over, so just keep your eyes on that snippet that he, he mentioned. So. I'm enjoying them though. <laughs> They're a lot of fun to film. Yeah. We got to go back to a set on the flashbacks that uh, hasn't been used in quite some time. It was cool. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know, during the flash panel, they mentioned a lot of Easter eggs that was in that series and how, you know, fans were really quick to pick up a lot of the Easter eggs. And this, is it anything that we may have missed that was placed in Arrow? from anything DC related or whatever. Mm. No, I read the reviews. You guys caught everything. Ah. No, no, okay. But I will say that I, the, the, the fundamental part of the season that, that no one's really gonna be able to understand until they see the premiere is that we do something in the premiere that we've never done in the history of the show. And it, 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 does, it does something for the remainder of the season that there's just, there's gonna be a constant jeopardy in the show, even if times are good. It's a really interesting technique. I think that it promotes a good story, and I think that it will pique people's interest. Oh God, I'm drooling right now. Katie, you were gonna say something. Yeah, really can you just say, ask that again, exactly what you asked? Any, any Easter eggs, anything that was planted in the show related to the DC universe or, or whatever that we may have not caught? In the, in, in the no. No, no, sorry. See, I misunderstood the question. No. Damn it. Sorry. I tried. Sorry. <laughs> and I can't tell you. All righty. Steph? Hi, I'm Cammie. Um, my question is for Stephen. Uh, Rhonda Rousey recently said she ships Elicity. Is that true? It is definitely true. That's I, amazing. She I ship Rhonda Rousey. <laughs> With the original team Arrow Tree. That would be amazing. Can you make that happen? Please? Yeah, oh my god, I'd love to watch that. Ronda yeah. Rousey can play, can, Ronda Rousey can replace me for an episode if she wants. <laughs> Ronda Rousey can literally do anything that she wants at this point yeah. to me, to the show. To the show. <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy. I'd rather see Ronda go toe to toe with John. I think that would be a much more interesting fight. <laughs> <laughs> be toe to toe. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh my god, I need a drink. Where's my bartender? Hey, uh, Aaron, <laughs> bail us out, dude. Okay, we have a question from Craig. Hi, uh, this question is for John Barrowman. Oh, ho ho. <laughs> I'm a huge motorsport fan. Yeah. Can uh, I saw a video of you uh, on Fifth Gear. Yes. So I want to know uh, what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And how and how you feel being um, taught how to drive by Tip Bell? Well, I I've been a fan of uh, uh, motorsport for a long time. I have a, a passion for cars. I have 13 of them. And uh, there you go. There uh, I, I've been over the course of the last 30 years. I've always bought. You know, I like speed. I like the the, the fast cars. 
I also like comfortable cars. Um, so when I was asked to go on this show to do rally racing, I've raced cars before on a proper track, uh, and I've done that, but I wanted to go, I wanted to experience rally racing. So when Tiff said, come on the show, we'll teach you how to rally race, I went, yeah! It's the same kind of thing with like Steven with doing the wrestling. I'm like, a childhood dream, love, I played with Matchbox cars, I want to drive the real thing. So I, to cut the long story short, when I walked up to the, the, uh, the, the, the driver, the race car guys, and they were like, yeah, we've got this, uh, you know, Subaru, uh, you know, Impreza, and it's uh, 120,000 pounds, it's about 200 grand, 200,000 uh, dollars. It's for sale, John, if you want to buy it. I'm like, yeah, I'll take it for a test drive and I'll see. So Tiff takes me around the track and I'm driving. If you've never driven a four-wheel drive rally car, it is unbelievable. It like sucks the road. <laughs> That's all I'll say. So I'm driving around the, 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 the gravel and everything and he says, you know, the first run, I'm doing it and I'm competitive. So I'm trying to beat the, the, the time and I'm driving and I'm driving and I get, all of a sudden he says, all right, that was great, stop, let's do it again and we're going to go a little bit faster. He said, I want you to go for it. I'm like, you know, so we did it again and I beat my time and he said, right, John, third time, you're going to do this and you're going to do it faster than ever. I want you to go for it. You're going to beat your own time. Ready, go. So I go, mm -hmm. And we get to the last uh, uh, stri little bit of straightaway, which goes into a curve to stop, and there's a, a, a little bump in the road, and I thought, this is it, it's my last chance. <laughs> Screw it. Put my foot down, I went Rrrr! And I came down, boom, and then they sucked the road, and I thought, they've got the road, I can turn! And I turned, but the car kept sliding! <laughs> and it hit the side, and I flipped over down a ravine six times. <laughs> The funny thing is, if you look at it on YouTube, the camera in the car, I'm going, Woo -hoo -hoo! Woo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> Tiff Nadell is going, Aah! We stop, he looks at me and he says, Well, that's what you call a roll in the hay with John Barrowman. <laughs> on the video, my manager and my assistant, all of a sudden you hear, I'm sorry, you hear, ah, and they're running, the camera's still wrong, we get down to the car, I get out of the car, the guy comes up to me and he goes, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I said, don't want to buy it though. <laughs> $200,000 down the tube, two weeks later the show was canceled because I missed the budget. By the way, that has not affected the way that you drive, okay? The first time that I was in a car with you, you drive well, but you drive fast. Yeah, um, Scott says, uh, well, it's my husband Scott, who drives like a horse with blinkers on, <laughs> like this. And then you'll say, look at that building, he'll go, oh, it's really nice, and you're like, I've got the road! Um, I'm a fast driver, I feel like I'm in not in my life in control, but I feel like I'm in control of the car. I do drive very fast. Yes, I do. By the way, this is like what we get to hang out with all day long. <laughs> it is awesome. Oh, the amount of energy and animation, I appreciate. I'm serious. You're just amazing. I love you, Katie. I love yes. you. John Barrowman, ladies and gentlemen. That is our man. That is our man. <laughs> Do it. Okay, but I'm... <laughs> oh my god, I need a bartender so bad. Oh, <laughs> whatever. Quit talk. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Bart. I'm a huge Euro fan and have been since the beginning. Uh, my question is uh, with John being such a great villain in Merlin and Matt being such a great villain. <laughs> in Ra's al Ghul. What do you think about season four with Damien Dark? Do you think that's gonna take it up a notch? Or do you think that we're, we, we have something left to see? Is it broken? <laughs> it's it's missing seriously a wheel. Is missing a wheel. You broke, you broke the, the chair. You broke the chair. <laughs> First the Subaru and now this. <laughs> Damien Dark. Damien Dark is a good villain. He's a different villain. 
and um, and I think the difference this year is that <clears throat> we introduce him right off the bat. He's in the premiere. I believe he's been in every episode so far. Um, and uh, it, it, it's Neil McDonough is just excellent. Right, I've done. He's just excellent, right. and he has such a great idea, and he has such a great enthusiasm for the part, and he's really embraced it. And I don't want to speak for him about his performance, but it, it's been really sterling so far. I think it's going to be excellent. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, Aaron. I mean, um, Steph. There you are, Aaron. Okay. Hi, my name is Jamila, and this question is for Steven. Um, what percentage of the stunts do you perform on the show yourself, and how do you stay in tip-top shape, athletically, because you are? Well, hey, <laughs> <laughs> That's not you, Rhonda, is it? <laughs> no, uh, um... Um, well, in terms of a percentage, that's a difficult question to answer. There are certain things, because of the logistics of our production, that they won't allow me to do. Like, as an example, because of time allowance, I did like 98% of my stunts in Turtles this summer, because we had the time. With Arrow, there's often things, wire gags, um, if you see, you know, uh, uh, what's the Arrow? The, uh, like an arrow that you rappel down on. I can never, I, I, a zip line arrow. We actually do that practically, um, but they, they don't usually allow me to do it because I'm not there during the, the prep process. So I would say I do, I do 100% of the stunts that they will allow me to do. I, I don't take a fight off necessarily and, and just let my double do it. But that probably equates to Geez, probably three quarters of the stunts on the show. Well, I'll, I'll say this: that uh, working with Stephen was such a uh, an education, really, in, in in stunt work as well. But also, there was a, a scene we were doing uh, outside one night, and they had it prepped with a stunt person. And Stephen said, "No, that's not happening. I'm going to do it myself." So he learned it in you know 15 minutes or 10 minutes, and you know. Uh, you know, obviously very important for him to do whatever he can on, on screen. I did one fight with him, uh, we did up on the, the, the mound. The fight, yeah. The... Yeah, Stephen did absolutely all of that. I, I was doubled for 90% of it with a, <laughs> a, 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 an older man with a better body. And, um, <laughs> but he did the whole thing. So, it, it, you know, Stephen, uh, like I said, that was something that really, his professionalism and his a passion for the actual character and and and, and squeezing everything you can out of it um, by doing those things himself was hugely impressive. You know, I, I, it was it was awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that's one of the ways that I stay in shape. And uh, and then and then this year, finally, one of the things that we've done with the production this year is, um, you know, there was an expectation of of people staying in shape, and there's an expectation of shirtless scenes, and there's an expectation of. Just, uh, you know, being able to do new exercises. But what we hadn't done is we hadn't factored training into our schedules the same way that you factor hair and makeup or a fitting or any of those things. So I went to the production and I said, you like the shirtless scenes? Yes, we do. Do you want to keep doing them? Yes, we would. Well, I need to train three times a week and you need to build it into my schedule. We need to have a trainer. And they went, okay. Went, oh, all right. <laughs> Now I'm gonna try. <laughs> well, it's fantastic. It is a it is a physical show, and uh, you guys are doing stunt work. You're doing hand to hand combat. You're doing uh, sword work. Um, and I think I think I personally think that Katie deserves a lot of credit because Katie uh, Katie worked her ass off in season three and continues to work her ass off. Not that you didn't before, but I mean I totally buy her transformation into someone that can handle themselves out in the streets. Have you seen her arms? Yeah, yeah. she's got guns. Okay. She's Legit got stuff. Guns. She's a badass. That's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate. No, that. you did it. You worked hard, and, and, and you know, and we all do. It's it's um, it's not a show. With all due respect to my cousin, where we can just open up our hands and all of a sudden there's fire.
I thought maybe he was back there. I don't know. I still meant it. So, oh, I hope he's back there. No, but we, you know, we have to, we have to, if everything sort of plays off the tenant that, you know, I got in shape and turned into a fighter this way, then everyone else has to go through the same thing. And, and, and everyone has put the same commitment forth, which is good. I agree. When we first were introduced to, uh, <laughs> now he, uh, when we were first introduced to, to, to Katie's part, I mean, it was a desk job. It was, you know, um, bad. And, and for her transformation, we you know, I automatically thought, I said, oh my God, now I'm sure, I'm sure her whole call sheet probably just changed, you know, which, like you said before, you need to fit in the training into that. I'm like, oh my God, she's got to do that too. But she executed it flawlessly. She's a fantastic canary. She's fierce. Uh, black canary, I should say. So, thank you. Thank you. And Stephen, I also appreciate the fact that you um, went to production and asked that because I was waking up at like four in the morning and going to training and then going to set and I was like, I'm just going to be a big, like, good sport about this because I'm just really happy that this is happening. No, actually, the and only reason that I had the idea was because I had a day of experience on the set of Spartacus when I, when I, when I screen tested for, for Spartacus. And I'll, I distinctly remember, A, the day before we tested, we had to train, and B, when someone asked me, they said, would you like something to eat? I said, sure. And would you like something to drink? Yeah. And I just thought they were going to come back with a bunch of options. They came back with three apple slices and water. <laughs> because being shirtless and showing yourself on that show was a priority, so the production made it a priority. And we are, it's not that they weren't willing to do it before, I just don't think anyone asked. No, or I don't think they were really aware. Possibly they weren't really aware. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Where are we, Steph or Eric? Hey. Um, hi, my name is Pruitt, and... Pruitt, I met you earlier, right? Yes. Cool. <laughs> um, I have a question for John. Now that you're... <laughs> <laughs> you look dusted. <laughs> now that you're in charge of the League of Shadows, what exactly are you planning? Oh. Give it up, give it Pruitt, up. Even though you have a wonderful southern gentleman's yes. name, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> but how about this? How about you come see me downstairs, we'll sign a little paper, and I'll make sure that you become part of the league. Yeah. And then maybe I'll tell you some of the secrets, okay? <laughs> Uh, you know what? I mean, he didn't ask me the question, but I can tell him something. <laughs> Go on then. See, okay. you're the main man in the show. You're allowed to. I will say that the first time that we venture to, uh, to uh, Mr. Barrowman's habitat this year, he, for once, is the voice of reason. <laughs> the moral voice. I'm saying nothing. And the moral voice of re no killing? Oh, come on. Well, no, I'm not saying, not saying anything like that, but he is right. The, we'll just say the moral voice of reason with a slight twist. <laughs> Do you know what? You know what? When I saw Barrowman, I hadn't seen him for a couple of months, and the first thing he did was complain about how heavy the suit was. So, <laughs> so no, heavy. Honestly, honestly, well, it is. You come, when you had it on, right? Yeah. You made the. the you don't realize that jacket, the green, the jacket underneath is leather, right? It's like a suede. Uh, I'm Raz Al Ghul. I'm Raz Al Ghul. Very <laughs> <laughs> no, complaint. I was like, it's heavy. It makes you feel like a hunchback after all. And then he was worried there. about the rings. Like he's got the ring here, and there's another pointy gold one that, and he goes, like, I'm going to wear that silly ring, and oh, that ring hurts. It does hurt. That yeah, pointy yeah. one, because when you go up to scratch your face or pick your nose, you stab yourself. <laughs> What do we? You like that one? That's creeper. All right. Bit, sorry. There was a bit that I, I can't tell you at all. But if you come to my panel on Sunday, I'll tell you the whole story. But no, we, Katie and I have a name for it, and she likes the ring. Yeah. Bye, Felicia. Love, bye. <laughs> bye. Some of the outtakes they cannot put on DVD. They just can't. Oh, they will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Didn't I tell
thought you guys this panel was going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, I warned you. All right, Erin? Yes, sir. We, our next question is from Catherine. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to say that I really enjoy the show. You guys are doing great. Um, but I wanted to ask, you kind of have a revolving door of the afterlife thing going on, um, where everybody dies and comes back. So how does that affect your your characters, and do you think it affects those who live more? Or those who live more? <laughs> <laughs> once you once you sort of deal with and establish the fact that resurrection can happen on a show, I, I just think that uh, I don't know. <laughs> Only one character has actually died on the show and come back. Is that right? It might be wrong. <clears throat> Yeah, so you're right. Far. Well, so far, and it's happening. It's you know, it's happening this season. If you paid attention to the trailer. Well, but... hang on a second. I stabbed you. That that was in the heart. You should have died. I don't know how yeah, he survived that shit. All right, now we need a medical <laughs> profession in the room now. You know, to determine exactly where that stab mark was. I've never been so hated in my whole life when that that I did that. Like I, people thought that was, you know, obviously, fans were very distressed. And, and from what I was reading, they were, you know, saying, is he coming back? I was like, as far as I know, the show's called Arrow. So, uh, pretty sure he's coming back. Pretty sure he's coming back. I, I didn't know how that was going to happen, because it was right in the heart, and it was, you know, and I kicked him off a big ledge. And, it was close. No, but you're right. It's common sense. You can't kill off your main character. As, as soon as we saw that, we were like, Well, oh. I was waiting for the call, like, you know, in the video. <laughs> yeah. Never came. And then they killed me. And now I've been dusted. I'm out. <laughs> that being said, I mean, you, you know, you can't necessarily kill off the main character. Uh, well, no, you totally can. Game of Thrones did it. But uh, here you go. But my favorite—I mean, that might have been my favorite tweet that we ever sent. You, you know, you stabbed me. You kicked me off the cliff, and I had the tweet ready for the second that the episode ended. I just tweeted, "Been a good run." Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look, they were still writing that at that point, so I, you know, I, they sent me home back to Australia, and so I didn't know how it was going to unfold. I kept waiting to find, obviously I knew Stephen was coming back, but when I spoke to him, he goes, he said, you know, I get a couple of weeks off now because of what happened. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the writers are remarkably clever, and everything that they do, uh, which is one of the joys, sitting around and doing a read-through uh, for every episode, um, and seeing it unfold, it, it never ceased to amaze me. So it was, um, you know, I used to get a little dirty with, Raz Agul just didn't shut up, you know, he was always <laughs> talking. So I just hope Barrowman they do the same for you. Because we went to a read-through and I had like reams of dialogue and Barrowman looked at me and goes, you're screwed. <laughs> Good luck. So I just hope they do the same for you. <laughs> awesome, okay. Uh, they have. <laughs> See, how long is that trailer? How long is that? Two minutes. Okay, good. We got time for one more, maybe two more questions. Two, so, more, questions. two more questions. All right, Steph. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm from Atlanta. I uh, just want to welcome you guys here, and thanks for coming out. Also, uh, on the first season, this is uh, really for you, Stephen. Uh, you did that salmon ladder, and you uh, we're doing that workout. We were just jumping up and back and down and everything. That was a double. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Oliver Queen. <laughs> and I knew that uh, Katie did it after that. I was wondering if you guys had any fun on the uh, set where anybody else did it. Maybe Katie Cassidy or David did it or anything like that. Katie wants to try it. Katie wants to try it. And I actually asked you to teach me. I did. Because yep. He is the pro. I went to our, our, our stunt coordinator, James Bamford, and I said, hey, like, I think I can do I can do it. Can can we do this? Can you show me how? And he was like, actually, Steven's gonna be the one that's gonna show you how. And I was like, great, Steven, Next time you do that, can you t can you tell me and teach me? And then can we should definitely videotape it and share it with I'll all watch of you. That. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ramsey can do it for sure. A couple of crew members can do it. Ronnie, camera, can do it. Really? Yeah, he does it all the time. Um, <laughs> All the time. No, I seriously. can do it with a vodka soda in one hand and the bar in the other. I can do it, but I just don't want to. 
I do think this year that we solved the great mystery of how you get the bar down once you get to the top. How? I'm not telling. Come on. He hasn't figured it out yet. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go for our final question, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, show the trailer. Are you guys good, cool with that? Yeah. All right. Um, where are we here? Is it Aaron? Yes. Our final question is from Ethan. Uh, my question is for Steve. I was just wondering, like, who made your bow and stuff like that? So. Um, the original bow was mostly done by the props department. It was a very simple recurve bow. I don't know where it came from. And then it was sort of fashioned into the bow that we find all over on the island with, which hopefully is a bow that I get to start using again in the flashbacks at some point, because I liked that bow and I miss it, and I can't use the original one from the pilot because I stole it, and it's in my house now. Um, um, like my torch with Doctor Who memorabilia. Okay. Yay! <laughs> and then the current bowl that I use is a compound that is made by Martin Archery in uh, Washington State. I believe it's in Walla Walla, Washington, actually. Uh, oddly enough. Um, yeah, those are the two bowls that I use. I miss the recurve, though. I love my recurve. John loves my recurve, too. I love your recurve. <laughs> And you know what, not a lot of people know, but he is very good with his quiver. <laughs> you are, he's, a, he's, he's probably one of the few on set who can actually really do it. You know who's got some legit skills now? Who? Willa. She's been practicing. Really? She's really good. Yeah, she, she told me, she's like, I'm practicing a lot, I'm probably better than you now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if our tech tr crew is ready, I'd like for you guys to hang out so you can receive the accolades for what we're about to see up there on the screen. If you guys can go ahead and roll that trailer, this is the fourth season trailer for Arrow, the show we all love. So who are you? You're about to find out. 